This is Mike Wallach with Trimec, and I've got a tech tip for you today about editing SolidWorks bodies with the delete face command. Now, with this situation, I've got a model that I don't want to change any of the existing features for the main configuration. So I've created a derived configuration, and I'm going to make a couple little custom edits here. Okay, so switching back over, um, I want to get to the delete face command, and that's on the direct editing tab of the command manager. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Now the direct editing tools are commonly used for modifying imported geometry that are dumb solids and don't have a feature history to manipulate. But they can also be useful for regular SolidWorks bodies. So I'm going to zoom in here, and what I need to do is delete, or, or rather get rid of this upper gear tooth. This one gear tooth is going to be taken out. Now this one was the, uh, the main extrude that the pattern was created from. And so I really don't want to mess with those upstream features. So the delete face command is going to be perfect for this. Now, because I'm working with small areas, I want to make sure that my image quality is turned up. Now I'm going to turn it up way higher than I would leave it. I'm going to come back and turn this back down later. But right now, for working with these small faces, I just want my uh, graphics to be as accurate as I can without totally killing performance. So, okay, I'm going to use the delete face command and go with the delete and patch option. Now, what this will do is it will replace the selected surfaces, or rather, it'll delete the selected surfaces, not replace them. And then it will extend surrounding surfaces in order to fill in the gap. But with this particular one, it fails because there's some geometry condition that doesn't allow this to uh, be satisfied. So to figure out what's going on here, I'm just going to choose the delete option. Now this one is just going to delete the faces and replace them with nothing. And that opens up a hole in the model. So it can't be a solid anymore because it's not watertight. I've opened up a hole to the interior. So you can see I can look through here and, and see interior surfaces. It is now a surface body, not a solid body. Okay, But now... I can come over here and see, sure enough, there's a little sliver face that needed to be included in my uh, selection set to delete that tooth. So I'm going to go down here and edit my delete face command. And now I need to kind of get back around to where I can sort of see what's going on there and be able to get to that little sliver face and add it to the selection set. And now I'm going to switch to the delete and patch option. So instead of just deleting all of those faces, it deletes the faces and then trims and extends the surrounding faces in order to fill in the gaps. So it allows it to remain a solid body. And just that one tooth is gone. And it's the last feature in the tree, so if I use the rollback bar, you can see that just above that, the tooth is still there. Okay. Now, let's take a look at one other use of the delete face command. I'm going to switch over here and see we've got this uh, arrow indicating the upward direction for this part. And um, it's created as an embossed arrow, and I don't really want this to be embossed. We're going to just have like a, a sticker or a decal or something on there instead. But I do want to maintain that outline of the arrow. So I'm going to switch to the delete and fill option. And what this will do is it will delete all of the surfaces that I select and replace them with a new surface. One new surface. Okay, so make sure I got all of them. And... Uh, there's also a tangent option, so I could make sure that the new surface is tangent to surrounding surfaces, but that's not necessary in this case. So now, those surfaces are all deleted, and they're replaced by a single surface that's taking up that uh, position where the raised arrow used to be. And now, so I can go and uh, add a color to that. And I don't want to apply this to the face. I want to apply it to the feature because... Uh, just SolidWorks handles appearances on features a little easier than faces. 
I'll apply that and uh, we'll go to say an isometric view here and take a look. So we've got uh, two delete face features. One using the delete and patch option got rid of the gear tooth and the other using the delete and fill option got rid of the raised arrow but replaced it with a new surface that we could then color to represent a decal. Okay. So delete face can come in handy for a lot of different things. It's a really versatile tool and if you haven't already, check it out.